let's take a look at the skill of writing net ionic equations to describe what happens at certain points when two ionic compounds react. So the first thing is net ionic equations, of course, have to do with ions reacting. So you need to be able to write balanced chemical formulas from names. And by that, I mean ionic compounds. And it goes both ways, really. If I write calcium chloride, and you can't immediately use a periodic table to fire off CaCl2, or if I give you MgCH3COO2, and you can't immediately name that as magnesium acetate, you need to go back and do some review. Secondly, you need to be able to identify double displacement reactions. So when I put two ionic compounds together, you need to recognize that because they're ionic, it's a double displacement reaction and they will switch their ions and be able to come up with balanced chemical formulas. Two of these and one of these. Thirdly, going off of what I just wrote, you need to be able to use solid solubility rules to tell me that sodium nitrate is a strong electrolyte that gets an AQ phase label or lead to chloride is an ionic compound that gets a solid phase label as a weak electrolyte. If you can't do any of those three basic tasks, you should go back and review some of the other videos and materials that we went over those in because those three skills are critical to what I'm gonna tell you now. Net ionic equations are all about describing what really happens in a double displacement reaction. So for example, if we take this, uh, if we take this reaction here where we react potassium phosphate with nickel two chloride, we get a re equation that looks like this. And we recognize from the chemical formulas we wrote or even the names that were given in the example that these are ionic compounds. So if this is double displacement, I'll switch the ions. Potassium pairs up with chloride. And when I use my solubility chart, I find that they meet up in a place that would get an aqueous phase label. And then nickel pairs up with phosphate because nickel is a two plus and phosphate is a three minus. There should be three nickels and two phosphates. And I'm gonna need two of these and three of those and six of those. Again, this is a skill that you need to go back and figure out if you can't do this translation part right away. What we've just done, and I'll leave that in black, is called the molecular equation, right? It's the full chemical formulas. And that's useful. It explains what's going on and it helps us easily name the things that are happening. By the way, I forgot to mention where nickel and phosphate meetup is a solid phase label. It helps us understand what's going on. But in its truest sense, remember that aqueous things break up, right? Aqueous equals ions, and ions are by nature separate. So another way that we like to look at this is to separate the ions. Potassium phosphate in solution is not actually together as K3PO4. It's K plus ions and PO4 three minus ions. I'm not gonna put the aqueous phase label here just because it takes up too much space. When you see an ion, it's implied that it's aqueous. And I notice that there's a two coefficient and a three subscript, so there's six potassium pluses. And I can see that here because there's six of them on that side. And there's two of these and a coefficient or a subscript of one, so there's two phosphates. Similarly, I can say that there's three nickel two pluses. Why am I doing this? It's aqueous, so it splits up. And there's six chlorides. And over on the other side, potassium chloride has an aqueous phase label. It makes six K pluses and six chlorides. Good, it's balanced. There's six of these on both sides. And then nickel uh, two phosphate is a different thing. It stays as a solid. You don't break up solids, right? So just remind, right? Solid equals stays 
together. What I've written in red above is now called the total ionic equation. Right, shows all ions. But you might notice that the reaction that we wrote, and let's separate that to just make it look a little bit more like the charge actually belongs there. You might notice that it's a little bit redundant. There's six potassiums on the left and on the right. There's six chlorides on the left and on the right. So we're crossing out what we call spectator ions. And what's left over is two phosphates and three nickels. And the order doesn't matter. And then Ni3PO4 2 solid. What I've written there is the net ionic equation. Shows only the important stuff. And what's the important stuff? We eliminate the spectator ions. What's a spectator ion? It's something that shows up on the left and on the right, like potassium and like chloride. They're spectating. They're watching the reaction because they go in one way and they come out exactly the same way. On the other hand, phosphate and nickel come out changed, right? So show, a net ionic equation shows only what changed, right? A molecular equation shows you everything, all the full chemical formulas in the gory detail. A total ionic equation shows you all the ions, again, in the full gory detail. Net ionic equations, just the facts, which things changed and only the things that change will remain. The most important part is to be able to split up those ions to figure out, for example, that there were six potassiums or six chlorides or three nickel two pluses. That's the bit that you want to practice. Break up ionic compounds into their ions, assign the ions according to what you know about their charge, whether they're a polyatomic ion or whether there's something you can get off the periodic table and then work. Let's try a couple more examples. So for these three examples, one, two, and three, I want you to practice. Pause the video, come back and check them one by one. You will need that table of solubility rules to be able to assign solid or aqueous phase labels. And then let's see where things go. So pause the video, we'll try one. For number one, I hope you noticed that this wasn't actually two ionic compounds. This instead was a metal, an element, with an ionic compound. So this is single displacement, but it doesn't matter. I can do exactly the same thing. I just swap the metals. And when I do that, I have to pay attention to coefficients, right? There's some threes running around there that you have to see. Going to the total ionic equation. I notice that there's nitrates on both sides that are completely unchanged, but the aluminum and the silver both change. Yes, they're both silver and aluminum, but their charges are different. So in my net ionic equation, I have to reflect that. Silver changed from silver plus to silver zero. Aluminum changed from Al3 plus to Al, a, a, or from Al0 to Al3 plus. Let's try just a couple more. Pause and try number two. In number two, we have our traditional net ionic equation, or not net ionic, double displacement, where we switch some sodiums and some potassium chlorides, and we predict imbalance. So in the total ionic equation, we notice that everybody is aqueous, so everybody breaks up. And the interesting thing to notice about this one is that there's two sodium pluses on the left and two sodium pluses on the right, one sulfide on the left and right, and so on and so forth. Do you see that there's no ions left standing at the end? When that happens, you write what's called NR for no reaction. Yes, you put some things in solution, but they didn't actually react with each other. All of those ions just went into solution, dissolved, and sat there. That's in contrast to number three. So I'll tell you right now, when you go to practice number three, pause the video, practice. When the answer comes up, you're going to see something totally different. 
in this reaction, we see that there's a solid on the left and a solid on the right. So in the net ionic equation, we're going to have one reactant and one product that don't break up. But we did have one reactant that was aqueous and one product that was aqueous. So, so, um, so spectator ion-wise, we cross out the lithiums and we cross out nothing else. And so overall, we're left with CO3 2 minus plus the zinc hydroxide makes two hydroxides plus a zinc carbonate. It's kind of the backwards of a single displacement reaction. You notice that the um, anions are just switching a little bit. This is a reaction that wouldn't work very well in real life, but is nice for net ionics to remind us that you take apart the aqueous things, you don't take apart the solid things, and you cross out what can be crossed out, and then you're left with what is left. That's net ionic equations.